Today's New Testament reading is the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 20th chapter. And as Jesus was going up to Jerusalem, he took the twelve disciples aside, and on the way he said to them, See, we are going up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be delivered over to the chief priests and scribes, and they will condemn him to death, and deliver him over to the Gentiles to be mocked and flogged, and crucified, and he will be raised on the third day. Then the mother of the sons of Zebedee came up to him with her sons, and kneeling before him she asked him for something. And he said to her, What do you want? She said to him, Say that these two sons of mine are to sit one at your right hand and one at your left in your kingdom. Jesus answered, You do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I am to drink? They said to him, We are able. He said to them, You will drink my cup. But to sit at my right hand and at my left is not mine to grant, but it is for those for whom it has been prepared by my Father. And when the ten heard it, they were indignant at the two brothers. But Jesus called them to him and said, You know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their great ones exercise authority over them. It shall not be so among you. But whoever would be great among you must be your servant, and whoever would be first among you must be your slave, even as the Son of Man came not to be served but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. And as they went out of Jericho, a great crowd followed him. And behold, there were two blind men sitting by the roadside. And when they heard that Jesus was passing by, they cried out, Lord, have mercy on us, son of David. The crowd rebuked them, telling them to be silent, but they cried out all the more, Lord, have mercy on us, son of David. And stopping, Jesus called them and said, What do you want me to do for you? They said to him, Lord, let our eyes be opened. And Jesus, in pity, touched their eyes, and immediately they recovered their sight and followed him. This is the word of the Lord. For today's meditation on God's word, we welcome Pastor Sean Linnell. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Today, October 31st, is All Hallows' Eve. It's also the 500th anniversary of the Reformation, commemorating when Martin Luther posted the 95 Theses on the door to All Saints Church in Wittenberg. These 95 Theses were 95 statements, topics, for a proposed debate that Martin wished to have on the selling of indulgences. You see, in the Roman system, it is still taught even today that while Christ does forgive our sins— God also expects us to repair the damage our sins have caused, sort of like community service in place of going to prison. This work of repair is called penance, and Rome teaches that the Church, specifically the Pope, can release you from your penitential obligations, and any time that you are released like that, it's called an indulgence. While today, penance usually takes the form of praying the rosary, fasting, and almsgiving, in Luther's day, the Pope also allowed people to directly purchase his indulgence, and those funds went to the building of new St. Peter's Basilica. Jesus said, It shall not be so among you, but whoever would be great among you must be your servant, and whoever would be first among you must be your slave." even as the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. Jesus Christ gave his life as our ransom, purchased and won us from all sin, death, and the power of the devil, not with gold or silver, but with his holy precious blood and innocent suffering and death. Whatever debt is owed, of punishment, penance, or otherwise, surely Christ has paid it all. God does not require our penance to repair our relationship with Him, because our relationship with God the Father is through His only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into whom we have been baptized. And the relationship between that Father and Son, we do not have the power to damage. Our relationship with our neighbor, 
is a little different, though. Martin Luther, in Theses 43 and 44, says this, Christians are to be taught that he who gives to the poor or lends to the needy does a better deed than he who buys indulgences, because love grows by works of love. Men thereby become better. Man does not, however, become better by means of indulgences, but is merely freed from penalties. So look, stop worrying about your salvation. God doesn't need anything from you, and Christ has got you covered in every conceivable way. Now, look to your neighbor, suffering in this broken world of sin. Bind them up. Repair some of the brokenness in their life through works of love and service. And this still is not penance. It won't increase your standing with God because it isn't about you. It's not about storing up good deeds or merit. It's about loving our neighbor, God's love being poured out on someone else through you by the power of the Holy Spirit working in you. I mean, Christ could have just been laser-focused, right? Made a beeline straight to the cross, but he didn't. He stopped to bind up and heal those that were in need. The Son of Man, the Son of David, the Son of God, first in all creation, stopped in his tracks upon hearing the voice of blind, homeless nobodies, and moved by compassion, by love, humbled himself to serve them, touch them, heal them. He didn't have to do that, but his love compelled him to do that. As we celebrate the 500th anniversary of the Reformation, and observe this All Hallows' Eve into All Saints' Day. Let us rejoice and embrace the ransom that Christ has paid on our behalf, receiving all of his gifts, so that every debt of sin is indeed paid, but also filled with his Spirit and living in the freedom of the gospel, let us look to our neighbor in love, and let us seek to bind and repair what brokenness we can encouraging one another in the faith of the gospel of Jesus Christ as we await his return. And all of this not because we have to, but because our love for one another as the Holy Spirit moves within us compels us to do no less. Amen. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus now and always. Amen.